and probably I was thinking to devote next tomorrow lesson to something more quantum, or, you know, something more research oriented. Uh, and, and this will leave the part of nonlinear dynamics to the seminar. But if you want, we can also have an extra lesson just on nonlinear dynamics. I don't know how many people are interested. Uh, or if you prefer, tomorrow we do nonlinear dynamics. Yeah. Make it. I don't know, I'm interested in nonlinear dynamics. Yeah, maybe we can make an extra. I can, I can easily before. find a room next okay. week. You tell okay. me next of the hours. The hours. And yeah. tomorrow I make a proposal and then. Yeah, I think it's quite interesting nonlinear dynamics as well. I think, for instance, uh, Rosario is working on some synchronization for. And sorry, when, uh, when it would be the seminar? Yeah, we need to set okay. up. So the seminar yes. is uh, on Tuesday at 11. In the Exisa building, is the building next to this one, is there. Okay? In, uh, I think, uh, Aula B or. Uh, for the lecture, if you want to have a nice lecture, I can search for uh, rooms on Wednesday 27. Yeah, in, in the afternoon. In the afternoon. Would that be okay? Second. Next Wednesday. But I think the postdocs will have the meeting in the same time. Ah, okay. In the afternoon. Yes, so you have it at 3.30. So maybe we can do the lecture at earlier. At 1. At 1, 1.30. Uh, you can stay. I mean, I, I, I want to be you want here, but... Okay, on Thursday? Thursday? Not a problem. Uh, yes. Thursday, 23rd? Okay. I ask... Okay, I okay. mean, I cannot guarantee tomorrow I let you know. Okay. <laughs> for coming to the third lesson. So I want to make a proper derivation for the topological uh, Dirac equation today. It will take us some time to understand all the details and the Indian vector. And um, the other part, a lot of um, consistent part of this lesson will be devoted instead to natural geometry. So we will introduce a non-trivial metric and with the, with the non-trivial metric we will define again uh, the, the Dirac operator, the, uh, the algebra fashion and so on. And so this will give us, so until now we have only looked at topology, so today we look at natural geometry and hopefully tomorrow we will deal a little bit with information theory. So. So let me start, before we go to geometry, let me start um, having a proper derivation for the topological Dirac equation. And uh, of course this is, is, is very similar to what Kogut and Suskin proposed in the 70s. Although for the moment we will not use spins, but you can uh, include that by inserting this new trivial algebra. Uh, and I will follow that, my derivation uh, in this paper. Uh, it's JFI's complexity of 2021. So, as we said, we want we have a description of the dynamical state of a higher order network, for instance, two-dimensional, in terms of topological spinner, which is represented as in the canonical basis as a vector of uh, a vector that represents a zero cochain, a vector that represents a one cochain, and a vector that represents a two cochain. So it's a direct sum of zero cochain, one cochain, two cochain. And on top of this uh, topological spinner, we define the Dirac operator as the serial derivative plus its adjoint, which for us, uh, we are still in absence of, in a, in a flat metric, 
will look like this, where B1 and B, uh, B2 are the boundary matrices that we have introduced uh, before. So the Dirac equation in this language, so we don't have a spin now, is, is this equation. So the Hamiltonian is the Dirac operator plus beta m, where beta is also what we call gamma zero, is the identity minus the identity, the identity, and the diagonal matrix of this one. And if you want to go higher order, you can by alternating uh, the sum here on the left. So this is something in the middle between kogut suskind and Kaller fermions. Okay. But it, 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 it draws from, from both. So we are interested in the alien state. So we are interested in the problem if psi is equal d plus m beta psi. This, this again by the problem. Okay? So here we need to be careful. And in order to do that, we represent this, we use the matrix expression. So just do it explicitly. So we will have uh, e psi, so e key for the first part, e c, e c, equal the Dirac. So we will have B1 acting on, on the edge, on the one to change. And then we have plus M beta, beta is the identity, so plus M, C, M key. Then we have this non-trivial part, so we will have B1 transpose acting on, on the zero for chain. So we do the gradient. And then we do the B2 psi. And here we will have minus M psi. And here we do B2 transpose key, again plus M psi. Just wrote, wrote element by element. It's nice and neat. So we rearrange, so we have E minus M key is equal B1 psi, E plus M C is equal B1 transpose key plus B2 C. And then we have E minus M. is equal B2 as false. Okay, so uh, it's um, oh, okay. So let's let's do this uh, operation. So we start with the this equation in the middle and we apply B1, the boundary. So apply, so this is 1, 2, and 3. So we apply B1, 2, 2. Okay. And so we get E plus M, this is a number, B1 side is equal. B1, B1 transpose K, then we stop because um, B1, B2 is it, the boundary of the boundary. So now, 
here we have V1 psi, which we see here in equation one, okay? So using one, V1 psi is E minus MK, so we have E plus M multiply E minus M K is equal B1, B1. That's nice and neat because this is an eigenvalue problem and this is the graph regression. So K can be an eigenvalue of the graph regression and we, we, uh, or, or a singular value of V1, right? Let's say that the key is equal to U lambda, and U lambda is the less, left singular value of V1. Left, left singular vector. B1 corresponding to Aiken value, X, uh, a singular value, sorry. Lambda. So we have B1, B1 transpose P is equal lambda square p and so this the energy will be such that e plus m multiply e minus m so e square minus m square is equal lambda square so we get that e square and this is the relativistic expression for the energy so, so this is for P, and we can do the same uh, kind of analysis. As you see, there is quite of a symmetry between first and the second equation, second and the third, third and the second. Okay. So maybe I omit this derivation. I think it's, there is not much to learn about that. So you take take equation two, you multiply this time by B2 transpose, and then you use equation three and what you get is this equation. E plus M, E minus M, C is equal V2 transpose V2. Okay. So you can say C is either zero, zero is of course allowed, or is a, a, at this time a right again vector of P2. Okay. So let me call this U1 because it's the left again back to U1. And C is either 0 or C is equal V2. And this is the right singular vector. of B2 uh, with again value lambda with singular value another singular value lambda prime because we are not guaranteed that B2 has the same spectrum of B1 right so we will have that uh, you know if, if C if C is equal B2 lambda then uh, uh, lambda prime then we will, uh, we will have the dispersion relation that 
this special Now, we have the thing is, actually the spectrum are not the same, so we really want to use this option to put C equal to zero, okay? Um, okay. But the option of, of um, putting vectors to zero was also available for chi, basically, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. That, that's also true. And we will use that. Okay. So, what we will use is that if chi is equal to zero, then, then this C is with the uh, negative vector of lambda prime. And if, uh, is, if, if this holds, then that T is equal to zero. If the other holds, then C is equal to zero. So let so we have this. Uh, let me just uh, write it clearly. So we have we have learned that we have two options. So either k is equal to u lambda one and c is equal to zero, or k is equal to zero and c is equal to lambda. Okay. And here the energy will be e squared is equal m squared plus lambda squared. This is actually lambda prime. And here we have e squared is equal m squared plus lambda prime squared. OK, now we are ready to uh, complete this table and enter the value of um, t. And the first option is that c is equal to 0. So this term is equal to 0. t is the, we said, left again vector of the 1. So it's the right singular vector of the 1 transpose. So we will have, this is option a. This is option B. So in option A, we will have that P is equal to lambda 1. So B1 transpose P is equal to B1 transpose U lambda 1. And this is the singular value and the corresponding this was left, this is right again. Okay. So when we plug this in equation two, we get that uh, E plus M C is equal lambda U lambda one. And so we get that C is equal lambda over E plus M lambda. And you do the same. Uh, 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 yeah, actually, sorry, I missed something. Here there is always a coefficient in front. There is always a constant. So this is uh, determine modulus a constant. Okay. And if you do the same, uh, so these are two different costs. And if you do the same in the case B, you find that uh, um, um, uh, yeah, you, you, you work out, okay? So you find that uh, C is equal uh, so, uh, okay, so let's do it. B. So you have. Should not there be U? Sorry? Uh, should not there be U instead of V? 
Okay. Here? Yes, you. No, because uh, you this is a uh, triangular matrix. So this is singular. So it's So U is an again vector of the graph of motion. When you apply B, you have an again vector of the one down. Okay. It, the dimension should be different. Okay? <laughs> so it cannot be the same thing. Does this convince you? Yeah. One is number of nodes, size, and the other is number of links. And if you, you remember that about singular values, it's just the eigenvalue is the same, but one from the right and the other one from the left. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so you, you do the same calculation here for the second case. So you have, uh, so yeah, so we see. expression which I think should be uh, C is equal to uh, C uh, B lambda 2 then you have you want to have B 2 B to C this is lambda prime is another value this is uh, This is C lambda prime U lambda prime 2. And then you plug into the equation and you get C lambda prime E plus and U lambda 2. Uh, U lambda, two. lambda prime. Okay? Okay. Nice and neat. So we have the eigenvector. As you see, these are, these are uh, eigenvectors. They have this, the same structure as the eigenvector of the Dirac, but in, in, there is a global scale between node and edges that is different, right? In uh, the Dirac operator, we have the right and left eigenvector with the same coefficient and plus and minus. Here we have the node, the zero cochain, and the one cochain that appear with the different coefficient, and the coefficient in front is a function of the mass and the energy of the system. Yeah, the constant in front is C prime, right? C prime, yeah, yeah. So this is a normalization. Okay. So, um, yeah. Um, now, we, we still have not, uh, so here the energy can be positive and negative, actually. So you might want to express this again back. These again back to our value both if the energy is positive and negative. Uh, but we want, we want to focus only, for instance, on, um, on the discussion of this again vector, right? And distinguish between energy, positive energy and negative energy. And before we do that, uh, we also discuss the harmonic uh, eigenvector, which are quite interesting. Okay? So first we discuss the harmonic, then positive and energy for this sector, and then we can work out positive and energy negative for the other. So, so here, let, let's say that the, the topological spinner is harmonic. That means that if you apply the Dirac on top of it, you, you get zero, right? So if you apply any of the boundary uh, 
one that you operate or you get zero. So for our money Kagan vector, we have D C R money equal to zero. Right? So our equation of state becomes is diagonal, right? So we have E P is equal M P E psi is equal minus M psi and E C is equal M C and of course this must be either zero or at money Because when you apply the boundary, it should be zero. So either they are zero, not all together zero, but either they are zero or they are harmonic. So of course, the, the vector, the harmonic Kagan vector that I can write, are a multiplication constant. And here I have an harmonic Kagan vector of the node zero zero. This will be corresponding to energy. E equal to M. Then I will have this is P1, then I will have phi 2 harmony, this is C 0 um, uh, let me call uh, U1, U1 harmonic, this U2 harmonic, 0, <coughs> and this will have energy minus M. And then you will have the one on, on the on the triangle. Oh, sorry, let me just use zero, one, and two. Uh, so and this of course is zero zero u three harmonic, and this has energy e equal to f. Now there is a question, right? So, okay, you can say M is positive, and then the harmonic mode on the edge, I have energy, negative energy, the harmonic mode on the node, I have positive energy, and on the triangle, I have positive. But actually, uh, if you think about it, when you write the Dirac equation, and you write the gamma matrix equivalently, the choice of where to put the minus sign in the gamma matrix or in the beta matrix is arbitrary, everything, and also the choice of the sign of the mass is arbitrary. So actually, you can assign, you know, positive energy to the edge and negative energy to the node. So this, you don't have to take it strictly that this is positive and the other is negative, as long as the opposite energy state. Okay, and indeed, I believe that. Because I did some calculation on the semi relativistic limit, I believe that actually the right is that the edge has positive energy. I mean, at least this is my convention. But, uh. So these are the harmonic uh, eigenstate, and that's clearly that they are not chiral. So, they, so they, there is no matter antimatter symmetry. So of course, nothing is chiral. Um, when the mass is non-zero, but uh, there is no matter-antimatter symmetry because you might have many more positive energy state than negative energy state. Instead, for uh, lambda different from zero, you have positive energy symmetry, and maybe it's worth it to look at uh, this uh, first class of a game vector and distinguishing some some expression when the energy is positive and when the energy is negative. So we put our, ourselves in the situation A, where lambda is different from zero, and um, lambda is different from zero, and C is equal to zero. Okay, so we have something only defined on the edges. And we want to find the, we want to find an expression for, okay, so 
this is a special, this is okay for the eigenvalue, but we want to maybe explicit a little bit there. So you will have this, this eigenvector, which will be u lambda 1, and then lambda over e plus m d lambda 1, and then 0. Okay? Uh, but we want to make a bit of a distinction when the energy is positive and when the energy is negative. So, uh, so when the energy is positive, we can just put here an absolute value and we are done. Okay? When the energy is negative, we want to make we want to express this in a different form. So we start with the expression before is a constant u lambda 1 and then lambda e, but I write e as minus e absolute plus n, e lambda 1, 0. Okay? And I want to work out a little bit because I don't like this difference in the denominator. Uh, so, so what we have is lambda over this quantity, but the lambda is uh, the square root, the singular value, so it's part is positive, the square root of e square uh, minus square. And here you use uh, this is e plus m multiply e minus m. Here you put a minus in the in your e minus m. Okay, you put a minus in front, and you simplify and. In order to simplify, um, so practically you simplify this with this one up, and then what you do is you uh, multiply in the by square root of. and change the constant here, find another constant here, and define this as lambda over e plus m u lambda 1 e minus e lambda 1. Okay? So you see, the expression of phi plus and the expression of phi minus uh, is such that you, you have a minus in the middle. This is a, is a, 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 a kind of charge conjugation operation. So the coefficient that you have on the links becomes on the node, 
the coefficients on the node becomes on the liquid goes in the links with a minus. So this is how charge conjugation work in this in this uh, so we have this equation and of course all the harmonic, right? And sorry, sorry, here this is energy greater than M and, and smaller and and energy negative than and greater than. Okay. So these are only for non-harmonic against it. Okay. So you should have the the state in which the energy has the the, the value in absolute value equal to the mass break the mass anti mass symmetry. They don't obey this conjugation symmetry uh, because okay so this is this is uh, this is what happens in this scenario so there is ma a matter antimatter symmetry but harmonic eigenvector with absolute energy in absolute value equal to green, break. Matter. Antimatter. Okay, so this is quite uh, instructive, I think. Uh, and this is what I wanted to tell you about the topological Dirac equation. So, um, it might, might be useful to, to refer to this also uh, for tomorrow. Okay, so, and of course, with this Dirac operator, I will not mention either uh, today or tomorrow, but you can construct a Dirac field theory. Uh, so you, you can construct a Dirac field theory, you can quantize, you can do the second quantization. And actually, uh, in a paper that I will not be able to discuss, I, I use this quantized field theory to define a mass for a network, which is actually a quantity that is not only interesting theoretically, but also for application, right? So you want to have a, a, a quantity that depends on the spectrum and tells you something about the network, and this is uh, this mass. So then I, I derived this mass in the framework of the Nambu Yonalazinho model. And what, what happens in that framework are two things. One is that this mass, you get a problem of a normalization because you are in a network, so everything is discrete. You don't go anything continuous limit. And this quantity, the mass, that depends on the spectral property of the network, so it depends on the, to the topology and the geometry as well. If the Dirac is weighted, as we will see, you can have a weighted Dirac. And uh, an interesting aspect of this, uh, this approach is that in the number Yonarazino model, in order to define this mass, they have a bare mass, little mass that break the, the chirality. And in this framework, this little mass has the interpretation of the Betty number. And another thing that you have is that since you, you, you have this thing that you don't know where the positive energy sits, if they sit on the node or if they sit on the links, you have actually two definitions of the mass, one depending on the even num Betty number and one depending on the Okay, but this Dirac operator actually we use it not, not only also for classical systems. So we use it for synchronization, we use it for Turing pattern, you know, you, you can use it everywhere. And the eigenstate, this eigenstate of the Dirac operator, you can plot it on any network, right? So you can numerically calculate. So okay. So we, we can start um, 
addressing uh, the second topic that I wanted to discuss today. Can, can I ask you yeah. a, a question? It's, it's more appropriate than, than a question. Uh, when, when one asks differential equation, usually it's also important to find uh, free functions, for example. For example. Uh, so, do you have free function in, in this context? I mean, since it's a linear operator, uh, any dimension, I think you, you just you, you would just invert it, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, I think so. Okay, but uh, I think there is a paper. But it, by because it, I think the determinant is, is zero. The determinant. Ah, yeah. Because uh, okay, you just uh, just typically one in one. So no, the determinant is non-zero <coughs> because because the eigenvalue of the mass is positive. Okay. The smallest eigenvalue is. So you can do it for only for uh, the mass. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Are, are there other questions? So. Yes, so we move and we um, address now metal geometry. So until now we have been fully topological, you know, we don't have, what, what is a geometry of a network? A geometry of a network intuitively is the length of the link, right? If you have a length of the link, you, if you have a tetrahedra, right? And the topology doesn't care about um, the, the deformation, linear deformation. And when you have a geometry, instead you care about how long is one edge, for instance. But it's more than that, because you will use uh, metric matrices that allow also to do a scalar product in object that is non-diagonal. Okay? So in application, uh, typically in applied topology, people only use um, diagonal metric matrix that I will discuss that are just, for instance, a metric matrix for, for the edge. If it's diagonal, it will be just uh, proportional in some sense or a function of the length of the links, right? But uh, actually, if you look at the continuous limit and you want to know the metric for one form, this is given by the fundamental form of Gauss and this is in general not diagonal. So, the object that we will consider is uh, a metric. We, we put ourselves always in the situation in which we have a uh, two dimensional simplicial complex. So, So we, we want, of course, in natural geometry, you can ask yourself on any question, but we want to remain in the realm of algebraic topology, but introduce this metric. So everything will be the same as what we discussed until now, only that we will have an additional matrix, or several additional matrix, that will tell us uh, the metric. So we consider G a uh, metric, and we consider uh, is a is a matrix is a n by n matrix. So you remember n was the sum of node, number of nodes, number of edges, number of triangle. And we take it uh, semi-definite. Positive. Actually, in most of the situation, positive. And you you write it in this block shape as G zero, G one, and G. So it's block diagonal. As I mentioned, for instance, if you look at G one, right? Most of the applied um, approach with assume that G1 is uh, associated with the link, uh, weight of the link, 
and it's diagonal. Okay? But for us, it will not be diagonal because tomorrow I will crucially speak about something that is not diagonal. Okay? We can keep it general. But if you want to look at it uh, only as a diagonal plane, you can. So, why do we care about this metric? Because this metric will define the scalar product between M cochains. So, so, we introduced this uh, rapidly at the end of the test class. Now we will go more diffusively over this and probably solve things that maybe were not completely clear because we were rushing a little bit. We define a scalar product between M cochain. So we consider F and G that are M cochain. And then we use the corresponding metric to define the scalar product. Okay. So we can represent F and G as vector defined on the canonical basis of L synthesis, so the, fun, the co chain defined on all the synthesis. And in this representation, you define this scalar product as the transpose of this uh, vector. G m to the minus one. Okay. So you remember, uh, in the first class, we consider L to norm. So L to norm, we correspond to a metric matrix, which is identity. Okay. So if the metric matrix is identity, you recover topology. If, if this is the identity, you recover topology. And so this is the scalar product, and then we define um, we define as actually we, we recall the definition of the co-boundary operator. This will will not change for the moment. So recall the co-boundary. Operator. I give this definition and then give me the other brain. Sorry. <laughs> or, or you want to have a break? Maybe we can have a break now. What do you think? Okay. I can I can go a little bit. Yeah. yeah. No, Just okay. finish this definition. Maybe okay. In that and then. Uh... Okay. Okay. Uh, so the co-boundary operator, you remember, acts on M cochain and generate um, M plus 1 cochain. And so if F is an M cochain, the co-boundary operator acts on F and generate delta M F. This is an M plus 1 cochain is defined by its action on the n plus 1 synthesis. <coughs> and it, it is given by practically the, the composition on f and the boundary operator. So the expression, so you have that Delta M F is equal F and, and the boundary. So in, 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 ter in terms of the element, you have the sum of P between 0 and M plus 1 of minus, minus 1 to the P. And here you have the function, the M cochain calculated on the synthesis at the boundary. So, okay, so the 
So it's an alternate sum, the covalent is an alternate sum of the function calculated, the, the function f calculated at the simplices on the boundary of, of this sequence here. So here we have V0, V1, Vp is missing, and then you go up to V. And as we, we want to conclude this discussion, let me just give an example. So, of course, we have the gradient. <coughs> so, if F is a zero cochain and G is equal delta zero F and is a one cochain, then FG R S is equal to the function calculated at the node, at the boundary of this edge. So it's the function, so you have uh, edge R, S. So the boundary is S minus R, and the gradient will be the function in S minus the function in R. And you can also define, of course, let me just conclude this with a curve. And the curve curve will be delta one between one cochain to two cochain. So if F is a one cochain and G is delta one F is a two cochain. So you have G is a two cochain, so you calculate on a triangle. R, S and Q. And the curve is the function of F calculated at the boundary of this. Uh, of this triangle, so you go F in RS, F in SQ, minus S in RQ, because the orientation is, is always induced by the node label. So you will have F in RS plus F in SQ minus F in, in, in RQ. This is the curve. So we stop here and then we continue with the co-boundary and then the adjoint of the co-boundary which will make use of this curve. So we can come back at 10 past. Quindi tu puoi fare un curvo di Okay, no, guys, we discussed this tomorrow. Okay. Otherwise, my brain will. Sì, 
però proprio nel sogno non si erano resi conto di questa sinergia. Quindi... Secondo me invece questa situazione ha delle caratteristiche di a meno che non fa le persone. Per cui si potrebbe sfogliare. Quindi secondo me si può sfogliare. Thank you. 
that uh, tentatively there will be an extra lesson Thursday at 2 p.m. Uh, with the room to be confirmed, probably at Galileo. Um, yeah, so we... So, sorry, maybe just to check. Yeah. Is everybody interested in the mailing list that I've used to diffuse the... Okay, you are not. You are not in the mailing list, so please then write me an email, say, lecture, and then I know. Okay, so let's continue with this discussion of the metric and before we go to the adjoint and we use the scalar product, I want to make it, make it clear what, because maybe we were rushing a little bit on Monday. So let's say, so the, this the co-boundary operator delta m, we can say is represented in the canonical basis by a matrix B, this means covandary, okay? It's not a boundary, it's covandary. And um, this is a matrix that is um, uh, dimension n plus 1 times nm. And actually, as you can see from this example here, the coefficient are 1 and minus 1. So this is uh, related to the boundary uh, operator. And actually what you have is this identity that the co-boundary matrix is the boundary operator transpose. Okay? So you, you need to go 
from n to n plus 1, so you need to transpose the boundary of variety. Okay? So that's uh, clarified the notation and might be useful to, to highlight, right? We were a little bit fast. Okay. So it's just the same definition of the boundary operator, it's just the transpose. So, so it's just about the entries are not always uh, zeros and ones for the combined operator. Okay. One, uh, okay. So one, 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 are they let, let, me, let me write the expression because I think we didn't. Mm -hmm. I was undecided where sure. So there is a nice expression. Of course, you can look at the coefficient in front of this expression, but so the boundary operator uh, between so this is a matrix that is um, um, n m minus one times uh, n m. So this boundary operator has elements that are not one and zero, but are one minus one and zero. So one if the two simplices alpha and alpha prime that have dimension that differs by one are similarly oriented. And minus one if they are oppositely oriented and zero and, and they are adjacent of course and zero other ones. So if you have for instance a triangle, okay you will have this is um, one, two, and three. You have you have that B two between the link one two and the triangle one two three is one because they are going in the same. They have the same or the similar uh, similar orientation. A row must be opposite in uh, one three. So that's uh, right. And indeed, if you calculate P2 between 1, 3, and 1, 2, 3, this is nice. And for the node, the assumption is that they are always positive. Okay. Does this clarify? Yes. Yeah. For okay. me, yes. So actually, this expression is quite nice because. Um, I didn't mention until now, but all this is carried on to cell complexes. And cell complexes are not only formed by synthesis, but also by cells. So cells are regular polytope. So for instance, a square lattice is formed by node, links, and square. And square is a two-dimensional cell, right? And then if you have a two-dimensional cell, you can define an orientation, for instance, this one, and you will use the boundary operator with that definition. Okay? This carries on. Um, okay. So now we are really ready to introduce the metric. So we use the scalar product, and we want to uh, define the then their joint of this co-boundary operator. Ah, okay. Want to define their joint of the co boundary operator, and this joint will be called delta m star. It will go from 
n plus 1 cochain to n cochain and it's such that for every f and every g and f is a m cochain and g is a n plus 1 cochain then you have g scalar product delta and f is equal to the delta and adjoint G so you want and we want that we call this represented by the vector by the matrix by the uh, um, and uh, n times n, n plus 1 matrix and we call P n plus 1 co-boundary star it's the adjoint of the co-boundary matrix so let me cancel this finally and then we put it somewhere so we call that F and G, so uh, F1, G2 is equal to F1 transpose G M to the minus 1 F2. Okay, so we recall this and we want to use this definition. So we want to prove that the M plus 1 star is given by G M D M plus one co-boundary transpose G M plus one minus one or using that the co-boundary is just the transpose of the boundary you can also express this as G M D M plus one G M plus one and to make things consistent you check that if the matrix or identity is adjoint of the co-boundary matrix is the boundary matrix okay and that's so let, let me just, just put it here just to make sure everything is, is if, if G is the, the big G is if G M is the identity and G M plus one is the identity, then B M plus one of course is okay. So let's let's prove this uh, expression. So this expression here. So this is straightforward, you just use the, 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 the scalar product. So you do G delta M F and you use the scalar product. So this is G transpose. G is a N plus one cochain. So you need to put here G N plus one to the minus one. And then you need to uh, use the matrix for the co-boundary. This is M plus one co-boundary, and this is F. And then on the other side, you write delta M star G F. This is the transpose of this object, okay? So if I do the transpose of this object, this is G, transpose, then I have the, my matrix for the adjoint of the combinary, but I need to transpose it as well. And then this is a M, M form, so this is G, the M minus 1, S. Okay. This should be valid, these two should be equal for any 
G and F. So of course the operator in the middle should be the same. So you get G n plus one minus one B n plus one co-boundary is equal to B n plus one star transpose G n to the minus one. Okay. So you do some operations. So you write, for instance, that B n plus one star transpose. You multiply both sides by G n, right? on the right and you get g n plus one minus one b n plus one co-boundary g n and now we are ready we now we need to do the transpose and if you do the transpose of course we need to invert the order of the matrices so we get Transpose. The, the matrices are uh, are uh, uh, yeah. The matrices is not only positive definite, but they are also symmetric. Uh, so should it be M, the first G? Uh, so, sorry, sorry. We need to do the matrices are are. Are symmetric, so if you do the transpose, this is it. So this is proving what we want. Okay. So perfect. So we can uh, work out some example. So for instance, uh, um, Yeah, let, 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 let's work out some example. I, I hope I will make all what I want to say. But so, of course, you want the, the, the divergence. The divergence is the joint of, of the gradient. represented by uh, B1 co-boundary star, which is actually equal to the boundary matrix. So you have that if F is a, the final on edges is a one co-chain and G is delta zero star F and so defined on the node, we have that G on the node, if we write it, uh, so we need to so write it on all the, the node S and we consider all the flux in This is the incoming flux. You see the coefficient is positive because R is uh, the target of the edges. Okay? Minus the incoming flux, the outgoing flux. Outgoing. 
So we are convinced this is a good divergence. Okay. Uh, let's see uh, if you have a metric, an expression that actually is useful. You know, I'm really advocating that this matrix must not be diagonal, but they often are, so <laughs> we can work uh, uh, the expression when the matrices are diagonal. So, one typical choice that is made is an assumption that the weight of an edge is larger if the distance is smaller. So, what you have is that, this is another example, right, G diagonal. So you can have G1 minus 1 uh, from link to link equal to the weight of the link. Okay. So you assign, you take a, a, a G diagonal, G1 diagonal, and G1 to the minus 1 is, is the weight of the link. And you can assign, and this weight of the link is, is not a one crochet, like this weight is, is the same if you, if you reverse the edge. And at least in application, it, it might, you might want, but this is going down like this. Um, so no, this is diagonal, so this is, okay. Um, and then what you can take is uh, G0 also diagonal. And uh, 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 you can choose any function of the node, but the popular choice is a uh, weight of the node, which is the sum of all the weight of the links. Incident to that node. Okay. So, this is also called weighted degree, the sum of all, because if the weight is 1, which is also allowed, uh, the, the metric associated to the node is, is, is the, the degree, the number of links of each node. Okay? So, with this choice, we have uh, G is equal to G0, B1, G1 to the minus 1. And if you work out, I, I, I just write the expression, we can just work it out. Uh, we have no time to go directly over this. But G0, this is G0 and this is G0 to the minus 1. So you need to divide by the weighted degree. And then here you have this boundary with the metric. And so what happens actually, you do flux in and flux out, but the flux of, of each edge is, is weighted by the weight. in flux out, but uh, flux in uh, each edge is weighted by the weight, and when you consider this, you can normalize. Of course, you, you have also the freedom, also if it's diagonal, you have the, cho the choice of having G1 identity and G0 weighted, right? So as we say, you have only the degree, and you have the weight all the same. You can also choose the weight uh, different, but the G0 identity, that, that's also not. Okay. So there are different properties, in particular if you make this choice, uh, this choice as, as we will see, the, the Auch Laplacian, the, the graph Laplacian, and also I think the Auch Laplacian uh, have a bounded spectrum. Okay, so <coughs> sometimes you want a bounded spectrum so you can play with this weight to add that. 
I have a question, just, just an example, right? But in general, you don't have this. You have something even richer because these matrices might not be that. Okay, so we have the co-boundary and we have the adjoint of the co-boundary. We can do the Hodge Laplace and we can do the Dirac operator. So the Hodge Laplace and let me tell you, this is one choice of the Hodge Laplace which will lead to matrices that are square, but they are not symmetric, okay? And then we will possibly discuss how to have metric and even a symmetric Hodge Laplace. But for the moment, the outcome will be something asymmetric. <coughs> These are, are nice because, of course, they are asymmetric, but since they can be easily transformed into symmetric matrix, uh, so they have a particular property that they have a real step. So you don't have to worry about complexity. And what is the definition? Is just BM, BM dagger. Plus the n plus one star, sorry, the n plus one. Okay, so it is similar to what we had before, but instead of having the transpose uh, under the perimeter, you now have this adjoint. So, so sorry, excuse me. I missed the first one. So uh, this is not symmetric, but still as real stuff. Real stuff. This is nice. And yeah, and the beauty of this is that all the composition will apply also for this. Okay? So uh, obey <coughs> all the composition. And so you will have that. L M up L M down is equal to L M down L M up and this is zero where of course I didn't define explicitly but this will be L M down and this will be Okay. So everything, you know, all the composition will carry over. We can distinguish between uh, irrotational, solidonial, and harmonic component. So let me just uh, show you because I, I think it's it's quite nice as, as, how how it works out. <laughs> so. Because this metric matrix simplifies. So you have L M up, L M down. So uh, so L M up is this one. So you have um, mm, So L L M up, you go. Uh, I think here in the paper I have the, the opposite. Uh, yeah, let me just follow the paper. It's just it's convenient. Down and up. The calculation is clearly the same. Okay. So we have 
big cobangari. So the cobangari is actually the boundary transpose. And then you have this PM star. So you start with the matrix with the metric uh, G and minus one. You have the boundary M and you have G M to the minus one. This is your D M star. And now you concatenate uh, this uh, add and up. So you have G and so uh, G and B and plus one G and plus one to the minus one. This is B and plus one star. And this is B and plus one. Stay. Transpose. Transpose. And now you see it's nice and easy, right? Because let me answer this. What you see here in the middle is that this is identity. And then what you have is the boundary of the boundary. So this is this is zero, and you can also prove, of course, that LM up, LM down is zero. So everything everything uh, carries on. Okay. So it obey out the conclusion. Um, it will be instructive to to work out. The expression for this uh, this uh, weighted Laplacian, maybe for the graph Laplacian, that is the most popular. So, so if you have the graph Laplacian, So this will be L0, will be B, uh, 1 star, B, 1, uh, okay, so boundary. Um, so let's see that key is a 0 cochain, okay, and then we have um, G is equal L0 key. Okay. And so this is uh, G is, uh, is also a 0 cochain and it's equal to So this is B1 uh, covalent of the adjoint and then you have E1 key. And of course, B1 key, we know what it is. On the edge, RS, this is key S minus key R. It must be boundary, far over the symbol. Uh, B1. Far over ah, ah, Kobana. Key S minus key R. Okay. And so, I now cancel the expression for B1 star, right? But I, I write you the so I think we had it previously, so it was B1 star uh, F was 1 over, this is in the case of uh, the the matrix that are diagonal and okay, so this is uh, so it is the same example that I was doing before the, the diagonal matrix weighted but diagonal. So this is K R. So this is should be the same 
equation uh, that I, I wrote before. Let me get it right with the sign. So this is on the node R. This is KR. This should be the input. So SR, SR, sum over S. And this should be the output. R, S, C. Okay? This was the expression we proved before. Plux in minus plux out, that weighted. Now we need to combine because our F is, is this. Okay? And if you work this out, you get that this is equal to 1 over KR. And then the, the weight, uh, we say, it doesn't change with the orientation. It's the same. So uh, you can write this as sum over all, all the neighbor of R independently on the orientation, and you will have F, uh, FR minus, sorry, QR, QR minus QS. Okay, indeed, this is QR minus QS, okay, with a weight that is independent on the orientation. This is QS minus QR, but it is minus So this is expression for your B1F, but F is the radian, mm -hmm. so this is the expression. Because it's been twice the expression? No, because the edges are all either oriented positively or negative. So, 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 sorry, the edges are all oriented positive, but some respect to R are pointing to R and some are going. Out. Okay. Every edge is either pointing in or pointing out to R. Okay. So this is nothing else than if you take this, de uh, this degree to be the sum of the weight, this, this is just the sum of the weight R, so this is identity, minus uh, a diagonal matrix that is just the weighted degree in the diagonal. And then an adjacency matrix that tells you if R is a neighbor of R, which is weighted. Okay. And so this is also well known as the uh, normalized, uh, okay, weighted or normalized Laplacian, and this is the operator that describes, for instance, the random walk. So can you repeat the last quality where, where it came from? This one. Yes. So K is a diagonal matrix uh, of element KR. Okay? Mm -hmm. So and KR is the sum of all S of the RS. Okay? So if I write this. I have that this object is QR that is independent on S, 1 over KR. Okay? So this is 1. And then I have minus 1 over KR, sum on S, DRS. And I say that this is a diagonal matrix of uh, 1 over the degree, and this is the, there is a missing. Okay. Okay, so this is the Laplacian of the random walk, because you go from a node to a neighbor node with a weight, and then you normalize by the degree. Or another way, you say, you, you, if you are on a node, 
you you choose your neighbor with some uh, probability with some probability and this probability is proportional to the weight uh, sorry the subscript on l0 chi is that s or r ah sorry uh, r okay so actually I don't want to go in deep detail about this, but the fact that this object has real spectrum is due to the fact that you can do a transformation of the eigenvector and a transformation of the matrix such that the matrix that and, and, and you can define a symmetric Laplacian operator. And this symmetric weighted or metric uh, Russian operator will have will, will be uh, is symmetric and has the same spectrum of this asymmetric as the different eigenvectors, of course. The eigenvectors are related by transformation, but as the same spectrum of, of these objects. Um, and for the graph Laplacian, this is very much used. So the mathematician that use graph theory or uh, spectral theory on a graph use very often and also machine learning use very often this weighted symmetric Laplacian so weighted symmetric graph Laplacian I call it always zero. So what the asymmetric one we saw that it was given by this expression, this was the asymmetric. The, the choice that you do for the symmetric, I use the same because otherwise it's too many indices, but of course another matrix, is identity minus Practically, you multiply to the right by k, the minus 1, and, uh, and, uh, and that's it, right? Uh, and, uh, and then by the, by the right and by the left, k to the 1 half. And, of course, this is, is nice and neat because you can also write it as k to the minus one half, and then you have k minus a w k to the minus uh, sorry um, yeah k to the minus and and this is the this is also is if there are, if the weights are all the same, this is the graph of Russian of topology, right? Uh, so, given this uh, example, so now we go from the example to the general theory. So we can define a symmetric algebra Laplacian. This will be the symmetric one. And how do you define it? You define it exactly the same way, but you redefine the co-boundary and it's the joint in order that one is the transpose of the other. So, and the way you, you do that is that you use Then you have the adjoint, the, the adjoint 
is just the task force. Okay. And this is isospectral, so it has the same eigenvalue of what we defined before. And obey all to the composition again as we saw before. Uh, and of course, we want to define also the Dirac operator with this matrix, and this we can do with the two languages, either a symmetric picture or symmetric picture. So with these two definitions, practically, of the boundary and the co-boundary operator and it's a joint, one that leads to a symmetric uh, relation and one that leads to an asymmetric relation. Uh, and so, so, yeah, so we want to define the Dirac operator, but maybe first we want to define the exterior derivative. So in the asymmetric uh, choice, the exterior derivative will not change to be the same definition that is in topology. So here we will have the co-boundary matrix or even the class poles of the boundary matrix. And here we will have the two co-boundary matrix or the class poles matrix and in the symmetric picture instead this exterior derivative will acquire the term depending on the metric and we can write D as 0 0 0 and here we have G B1 transpose this is one dimensional, so this is really one dimensional with the minus in front, this is zero dimensional with the plus, and here G2 uh, with the minus in front, G2 transpose G1 minus in front. So if you use the Big matrix, the one the final node, edge, and triangle. This can be also expressed nicely as this. Okay. And the Dirac operator with the matrix. Again, we have two scenarios, uh, but it's always defined as D plus G star. Okay? Here, G star is the transpose because uh, this is. We, we, we say that the co-boundary matrices in this picture are the transpose of, of its adjoint. Here, this is D plus D star, it would be symmetric for this choice of D, would be anti-symmetric for this choice of D. In all the cases, D square will be equal to L, where L is L0, L1, and L2. 
and the algebra function are always defined like this, but the covalent of or and its adjoint are these two different definitions, either symmetric or asymmetric. Other questions? Okay. So now we have all what we, it takes to describe, you know, uh, we, to adapt algebraic topology to the scenario in which we have a metric, right? And actually, the metric can be an important player in, in, in dynamical process, for instance. For instance, if you want to do diffusion, diffusion with the metric, when you use this, uh, with these metrics, the, the metric might tell you, for instance, that you don't want to diffuse in some direction, right? While if the metric is plugged, go homogeneous in every direction. So the metric is quite important to, to shape the process. And for instance, it's also important in, uh, in machine learning when you want to do image uh, reconstruction. So if you have an image that is blurred, you want to do diffusion, right? In order to remove the high frequency but actually where there are big contrasts, you don't want to diffuse because then you will lower the quality of the image, right? So you want to put there a metric that impedes diffusion. Uh, so tomorrow we will speak about, we will speak about geometry and topology and we will introduce concepts in information theory. It would be more based on, on my research, that, but this is kind of still more textbook. Uh, but it, I think it would be nice because we introduce concept of uh, information theory in this picture. Uh, so the idea is to have a, an action in which the metrics change with the topological spinner. So I, as a function of how the topological spin or changes, or the matter field changes, you will have changes in the metric as well. Okay, and then probably we will have another lesson for nonlinear patterns. See you tomorrow.
Quindi cosa cambia la definizione? Eh, cambia un po' la definizione del comando. Ok, perfetto. C'è un modo intuitivo di vedere in che modo cambia o è semplicemente... Eh, non so, non si vuole proprio sapere di... Cioè, di cambiare la definizione del comando. Ah, se no mi guardo e rileggo le note. Sì, sono qua. Però comunque la cosa importante è che gli operatori di boundary quelli li lascio definiti sempre allo stesso modo. Passo, cambio la definizione dei co-boundary. Okay. Boundary non cambiano. Eh. Sì, cioè, almeno non così ho okay. facilità di ricordarmi se no uno si scorda un po'. Ok, ah, okay. Tu usi solo le boundary e poi scrivi tu. Okay. Almeno okay. per me è così, poi se tu vuoi scegliere tutti i comandi di credo che proprio cambierà convenzione. <ride> <ride> Grazie mille. Ciao, 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 ciao